was learning WCF services today and I started by just doing a search for uh, WCF and screencasts and came across this uh, very nice site uh, page that Microsoft put up uh, with a bunch of Channel 9 videos. Aaron Sconard of uh, Pluralsight. These are, are excellent, and uh, but they didn't do exactly what I wanted because I'm going to be on a closed system. I kind of don't want to be contending with security issues and permissions and NetSH and all that stuff. So I wanted to find a way to do it in an unsecured manner, and uh, so that's kind of what I'm going to focus on here is going through the whole process of setting up a uh, WCF service. So let's switch over and let's start a new WCF project. Go up to the C sharp WCF, pick WCF library. This demo is going to do a data collection, or it's going to start a data collection, stop a data collection, and give us the status of the data collection. So let's call this data collection library, and let's put it in uh, demo WCF. Okay, so it created our project for us, and uh, I actually don't want the uh, the default services that it created, but it's worth noting there that it's already done some things in the uh, app config. So if we change this from this i service name, then we're going to have to go in and adjust that. So um, actually, we'll do it this way. Let's just rename this interface to i data collection service, and then we're going to want um, a method that just uh, starts the collection and we're going to have one uh, that stops the collection and then I want one that returns the status and the status is going to be an enum so I'm just going to paste this enum in here okay there's a collection status enum and let's put our last operation contract in here. It's going to return the collection status enum, and we'll just call it get current collection status. Okay, let's just get rid of this class. It's stuck in here. We don't need that. Yeah, we don't need that. Okay, so we should be all set. Okay, now I want a class that's going to just maintain the state of my collection for me. So let's come in and say add a class. Let's call it collection state. Let's just, uh, collection state is going to use the data contract. And then we'll just bring that in using ReSharper to help do some of that. And then uh, we're going to have a data member. We'll probably end up with a lot of data members in this class, but for now we'll just put one that's the uh, collection status, right? And let's just call it the current status. Okay. And let's uh, let's rename these files too to be I data collection and call this one just data collection so now we just need to implement a class that um, uh, implements our actual service instead of the fake one that I put in here so let's give it the contract let's go grab all the stuff it put in and just get rid of that and let's just let it um, fill in the contract for us. Okay, so let's just have it do very simple things. So let's first, let's just add a member collection state class. And let's call it collection state. And there we go. And then what start collection will do will be it'll take collection state, um, current status, and we'll set that to collection status 
started. And you can guess what the rest of these are going to do. And then the get is just going to return collection state current status. And that's it for the implementation. So let's try building this. Our build succeeded. And now we're going to use uh, right click here on app config and use the nice little editor that the IDE gives us. And so one of the first things we got to remember is we changed the name of this from service one. So let's come in here and let's drill down to our actual DLL. And there it is. Data collection library, data collection. We're going to change some of the other things. One of the first things I discovered is if you try to change anything on the base address, there seemed to be some permissions that were set up automatically for this port and this very specific path, and changing this causes errors. So it was one of the first things I wanted to figure out how to get around. And I uh, probably won't take you through the same steps for the learning process, but here's our, our endpoints that it gives us by default. We're not going to end up using these, or we'll end up changing these. But the first thing I want to do is come into bindings and create a new binding configuration. And I want a net TCP binding. And the reason we're creating a configuration is we want one with the security we want, which in our case is none. It took me a long time to figure this out, but it's awfully simple to do once you know it. Um, so let's give this uh, a name that's a little more meaningful, TCP unsecured. Okay, so now we've got a binding. So now, and when you're doing these, you got to be kind of careful on these endpoints, make sure you don't get into these endpoints by mistake. So. This is a, an endpoint for actually getting to our methods, and then this is a uh, metadata endpoint for the metadata exchange. And then another thing to know is when you're um, creating one of these by hand ever, you come in here, and it's actually in the GAC. You come into the GAC, and you type in system system.model, I think, service model. And you go in there, and there it is, I metadata exchange. Well, we've already got one, so we'll just keep it, and we'll just change the settings the way we want them. But the first thing we do is well, let's go in here, and let's change this binding to use NetTCP binding. And then let's change the contract to be our contract again. So we should see our I data collection service. There it is. That's the contract we want. Explicit is fine. And now we want to put our binding configuration on here. TCP secured. And just for fun, let's give this a name. This is our uh, our data endpoint, say. And then uh, let's even give it an address that we're going to put on top of the. Let's just call it basic. Um, okay. So now let's come up to the host, and here we want to edit this because we're not using uh, we're not going to use HTTP for the metadata either. So we're going to come in here and let's call this this is net.tcp colon and the problem with using local host is then when you go to other computers it's not going to work. So let's so I'm just going to give it the name of my computer. You would give it the name of your server and or who's ever hosting the service, really. And then let's change this to 8080, just so it's a little easier to remember. And then let's call it um, data collection service, just like that. And we'll get rid of all the rest of this stuff. OK, so that's our new base address. Now let's go back to this one. And let's tell it we're not going to use max HTTP. We're going to use max TCP binding. And we don't need the configuration on this. It'll get it in the uh, add-on to the address will be max. And we can give this a name so that we know that it's the metadata one. OK. And I don't think there's too much else we want to do, except I believe there's a default on the service metadata that says HTTPD get enabled. So we want to turn that off. And if I didn't get it all right, it's going to tell me. So let's just save all that off. And really all this is doing um, is it's writing 
into this app config file and you'll find that out easily if you leave these both open whenever you close one the other one will prompt you that it needs to be updated so you can see there's our security mode got set to none and uh, the endpoints are here uh, the configuration the contract um, so this is the basic one and then here's our metadata one okay so let's just try and do a well first we just do a build no problem going to build now the way this WCF works in C sharp is uh, it's very nice it's actually going to launch the service for us and then launch a test client for us automatically if everything works otherwise we'll get some error messages and I can see you can't see it but off to the corner it says it's been hosted and then the test client so I'm going to go down to the uh, taskbar on the right and uh, I'm just going to double click and bring the host up so you can see it so there's the host and there's the meta uh, address and it should look familiar but let's just copy that so we have that in our buffer and then I'll move this out of the way again okay so you can see the metadata got read it's showing our three methods um, and then we can try them out we can double click we can click on invoke and the first time it's a little slow it gets everything started and you can see it returned idle which is what the state should be and then let's double click start and invoke start and now if we go back and do the get status again now we can see well, did I not do it? Yeah, returned, start, invoke. Well, then I must have done something wrong in my code. We'll go back and look at that. And let's go take a look at what happened. So closing that kills both the service and the uh, client. Okay, I can see the problem. I haven't specified a behavior on the class that I want this to be a singleton so that every time I do a call, I'm hitting the same instance of this. So the way you do that is you just come up here and you say service behavior instance context mode equals instant context mode dot single it builds the host has started here's our client it's getting the metadata there's our metadata let's invoke to make sure it's idle to begin with there's idle let's come over let's invoke the start and then come back let's invoke idle it is now started let's pull up a stop and invoke that and let's come over here and it stopped okay so now everything's working where we're hosting running the host and the client on the same computer so now what we want to do is move to another computer so I'm going to use remote desktop to get over to an XP-based computer, and the computer we were just on was running Windows 7, and I'd already started this up, but I'm going to close it back down just so. so here's a Visual Studio command prompt, and what you do is you just type w WCF test client, and then you paste in that address we copied earlier. Well, in the command you got to do it correctly, paste. So you can see it kind of wrapped here, but the computer name and the service name that we gave it. And it's the metadata address. And so we hit return. And that's launching a WCF test client over here on this other computer. And we can see the address there. So let's go get the uh, current status. I can't remember whether it started or stopped, but we did one of those. And there it is. It stopped. So from here, we can try and invoke it again come back and get the status and it started so now we've got WCF running from both clients